let's just call it what it is, guys. The Aaron Rodgers era, the Aaron Rodgers era so far in New York is a complete failure. The Jets are an absolute disaster right now. And this might not be breaking news or an original take from anybody, but I mean, how 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 disappointing are the Jets this year? Let's just call it what it is. I was saying when the Jets were pursuing Aaron Rodgers, don't walk, run from the guy. Because the Jets had already tried to do as much as they could to at least feel like they weren't under the curse of Woody Johnson anymore, right? The Adam Gase days were long gone. Golly. <laughs> okay, I might have witnessed one more coach that was worse than Dennis Allen. Adam Gase was a crazy looking man. I'm, I'm going to just say that is what it is. Adam Gase was awful. <laughs> Dude was very awful. And after that, you know, they try to bring in Robert Sala, who I thought was a decent hire. We see that he came over from Seattle. We saw that, or excuse me, came over from um, San Francisco. We knew that he was with Seattle. You know, we saw him play that defensive coordinator role with a with a couple of NFL teams. They go out and draft get Zach Wilson second overall, who I did not think was the answer, but they were at least trying to get their quarterback of the future. They had gotten Garrett Wilson, drafted Brees Hall, drafted Sauce Gardner. Some of the best young talent at the top of each of these drafts, so they were starting to stack it up. We knew that they had high draft picks year after year after year. Even Will McDonald coming into his own now. So we saw that the Jets were trying to right some of their wrongs. And when they said that they would literally, quote, send the house, go all out to sign Aaron Rodgers, I was like, okay, they haven't changed a bit. Clearly, they haven't changed a bit or they're watching Aaron Rodgers highlights from his MVP seasons and they're not watching his post-game press conferences, which I'm not saying Aaron wasn't good out of his MVP, wasn't good outside of his MVP years because we know that the year he won the Super Bowl, he did not win an MVP and he was an underdog against the Steelers and went and did that. But all of the signs were kind of pointing towards Aaron Rodgers, okay? And just for them to do the full send, Obviously, the horrible tragedy happens last year when he pops the Achilles. And it's just like, damn, are these are these guys cursed from the jump with the Aaron Rodgers era? I don't ever want to assume that, but it was kind of hard to turn away from. The bad offensive line was, you know, probably the biggest outlier from the jump, and it shows every single week. Robert Sala, you know, he went 20 and 36 in his three and a half years with New York. And again, I thought the hire was decent with all things considered with his previous NFL background. I I was never worried about the quality of talent around Aaron Rodgers, but more the age of the players and their lack of experience, not their lack of talent. Brees Hall is a very young guy. Garrett Wilson's a very young guy. Same thing with Sauce Gardner. And I said, all it's going to take is a drop or two from Garrett Wilson, a fumble or two from Brees Hall. Yes, I am being a little, you know, stereotypical in terms of an Aaron Rodgers characteristic there, but we've seen him struggle with the younger players. We saw him with New York not go to training camp not go to some of these mini camps to mesh with these younger players. And I'm sorry, that's just inexcusable. That is a recipe for, 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 for disaster, for failure. If you know that this guy has a problem blending with young guys and you're one of the youngest rosters in the NFL, even if you weren't, Brees, Garrett, and Sauce are three of your most important positions and they're all young dudes. Now, I know A-Rod doesn't have to, you know, vibe with Sauce Gardner, essentially, but Brees and Garrett, absolutely. And you thought it would be smart to chase after him knowing his characteristics. You know, he barked for Alan Lazard. He barked for Randall Cobb. He barked for Devontae Adams. I'm not going to say he barked for them, but we saw him on previous teams. Obviously, the only previous team he was with was the Green Bay Packers. Give me this guy. Give me that guy. And there's nothing wrong with catering to your quarterback to be able to get him some familiarity because every quarterback needs veterans and every quarterback needs weapons. But goodness gracious, I mean, what are what were the Jets thinking? You 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 go all the way to get him, you restructure his contract, you have this guy go on Pat McAfee immediately gaining the celebrity type of vibe with the team to tell everybody that his intentions are to play and his intentions are to play for the New York Jets. I won't go as far as saying he got Robert Sala fired because I just don't know how you can correctly correlate to that. Um, you know, one, did Aaron Rodgers really think that was the right thing to do? Two, him and Sala literally only had, what, four games? Five games into the into the Aaron Rodgers era? 
I know I'm inaccurate on that specific number of games, but dude even did get a half season. He didn't even get a full season with Aaron Rodgers. This is supposed to be the new era of the Jets. It doesn't look good midseason, all things considered. And with Rodgers having the history that he does, it's going to be hard to convince the fans otherwise, I personally think. Now you're sitting at two and six. You're on a five-game skid. You just lost to one of the worst teams in the league who's in your division as the Patriots who hold that very high pick in the draft. And your only two wins are against awful teams. The Patriots earlier on in the year. And obviously when you were um, you know, beaten up on the horrible Titans as well. You got smacked by the Niners in the first week. You come back and win two straight games. And you have, you're have you fooling all the Jets fans. You're making them think it's nice and big and beautiful and bold. And now you've dropped five in a row and you're sitting at two and six. So, you know, the season's all but over. And I'm not going to say, you know, eight games into the Aaron Rodgers era, it's a complete disaster and a failure. But as of right now, as it sits, it is a failure. I'm not going to completely declare it as a failure and say, oh, I've seen what I need to see. You know, it's done and over with because they could very well turn it around. We know Aaron Rodgers has, you know, the intentions of uh, uh, playing two years for the New York Jets. I don't really know how that's possible if they don't really have a big overhaul this season because Rodgers is just not the same guy. Let's call it what it is. He's not. And now you're having him off of the Achilles, 40 years old, makeshift offensive line, young players, interim head coach, can't even beat the Patriots. Do I need to go any further? Do I need to give any more reasons as to why this is not looking up for the Jets fans? And hey, y'all see the Florida Lee behind me and all around me in this in this setup, okay? Y'all know I bleed black and gold, so I can't really speak or toot my horn, rather, to say that I'm you know a, a fan of an elite organization. I'm just here to give you my opinions on the NFL with AJL because that's what I love doing for you guys. To have so much talent and be at two and six shows you that front office and coaching matters. You're 24th in offensive yards per game. You're 25, 25th in offensive points per game. You can't run the football despite every bit of talent. You can't score despite every bit of talent. And it's just, it's, it's sad. It's genuinely sad to know that Jets fans had a lot of hope in this. And, you know, when I even made my preseason predictions last year, I really thought, that the Jets could go to a divisional playoff game. I mean, you know, the, when you look at them on paper, yeah, you might not care for Robert Sala, but when you have a quarterback, it maybe disguises the head coach's deficiencies a little bit. And when you have a good quarterback, it can disguise some of the other deficiencies a little bit. But it's rough. It's rough. It's bad. It's. I'm not going to say it's an abomination, but it's a big time letdown. And again, it's going to be hard to convince these fans otherwise that Aaron Rodgers was not the reason that Robert Sala got fired. I hope they can turn it around. You know, I, I really hope they can get some more competence injected into the team because as a Saints fan, I'd love to watch, learn, and see what I can bang into the head of, of Dennis Allen and Mickey Loomis as well. 